Hi, I'm Jonathan Knight, and this is B-Movie Madness. The movie we're going to talk about tonight... Another Puppet Master movie. This time, Retro Puppet Master. Let's get the, the glare. Uh, well, Retro Puppet Master is the seventh in the series. It's yet another prequel. This time, it focuses on Andre Toulon when he was a young man. And he first learned the secrets of how to, you know, make his puppets come to life. Um, um, and uh, while trying to court his girlfriend, Elsa, who was, you know, died, became Leech Woman later on, um, while trying to face off the evil god Sutex's sinister minions. Describing them really poorly, but, um, in my last review for Curse, or not my last review, when my review for Curse of the Puppet Master, I talked about how when that came out, I was really excited about it. I saw it, I loved it, and over time I grew to dislike it. Um, this one, my memories of this movie coming out, is I was out of state and I rented it from the video store and for the first time ever I simply did not like a Puppet Master movie and I was kinda of thrown off about that because you know I loved the first six movies and this one I really did not care for and I really didn't know at the time why I just didn't care for it and rewatching it over the years and rewatching this blu-ray listening to the commentary tracks and kinda of thinking about it my overall um, impression of the movie is that it's just incredibly bland and boring. Um, I don't think we need another prequel story. Pretty much the stuff in this movie we've heard about before, although there's a lot that Puppet Master and continuity don't go together because it's all over the place. And some of the stuff that we hear about in this is some stuff that's different. They told us it was different in the past, but we really did not need this movie. It was really unnecessary. Um, um, it, I'll give it some a little bit of credit. Unlike Curse of the Puppet Master, at least is like a whole movie. It's not plagiarizing on like a, a plot from another movie. It's not using stock footage all the time. Although if I have a choice, I will pick Curse of the Puppet Master and watch again easily because this movie. For some reason, they talk about it on the commentary track, and you know, I remember when I rented it and I looked at the back of the box and it said PG-13. I'm like, why the hell is a Puppet Master movie PG-13? And on the commentary, David Dakota, who returned to direct this one as well, said that Charles Band wanted this to be part of his kids movie line, and it needed to be toned down for PG-13. Now, this is before they filmed, so the, they, um, they had to take the script, which David Dakota says was really extremely violent, and they had to tone it down for a PG-13. And, you know, I'm not saying gore or blood or whatever. Gore would ma makes a good movie. But in this movie's case, you know, it would at least had something for us to remember. Because Curse of the Puppet Master, as bad it is, as bad as it is, it has some good gory puppet kills. This one don't have it. Now I will say I actually really like the retro puppet designs. You can see some of them on the cover. Uh, the skull one is Doctor Death, and I actually liked them. I thought they were really cool. But the movie does not even they're not used that much in the movie. They actually I don't think they fully wake up until nearly an hour. An hour in a movie that's only an hour and 20 minutes movie. And they barely have any action. And their action is just crawling on top of the uh, Sutex minions and stabbing them. And instead of blood, sand comes out because they're mummies. And it's just really boring action. Even Dave Dakota says that, you know, they wish they had some kind of gore to put there. Because, you know, it looks better than what it is. But, yeah, they barely have any action. They, they're these, like I think it's about 48 to 50 minutes in the movie. They finally wake up and they do something. Um, and it's really, really sad because the retro puppets look really cool. It's a really unique design. Um, there's a comic book series. I wish I got my comic down. I'm looking over there uh, to show it. But they did uh, use the retro puppet masters in one of the Action Lab comics. And they used them in two issues way better than this movie did in 80 minutes. It's really sad and disappointing. Um, the biggest thing about this movie is that Greg Sestero, uh, Mark from The Room who wrote the Disaster Artist book. He plays young Andre Toulon in this movie. This was one of his, I think, his first movie before The Room. And he's not very good. Um, his accent is terrible. His chemistry with the actress playing Ilsa is terrible. 
Um, in fact, everybody in the movie is pretty bad, except for, and I think his name is right here, Jack Donner. He plays, um, I can't even pronounce that, um, the renegade sorcerer who gives, who teaches Andre to, um, the secrets of bringing puppets to life. He's really good. He's not in the movie that much. He's in, he, not in the movie that much, but he's really good. Um, the rest of the actors, um, because I'm looking at the back here, and it's trying, and it's funny, it's trying to make excuses, like, this movie is better because it has rich production values, which, the production values, I'll give some credit, are not bad. I mean, they, there's more effort in this one than Curse of the Master. And there's more stronger um, focus on human drama, which is not a good thing. Because when I want to go see a Puppet Master movie, I'm not going in for the human drama. I'm going for the puppets. And this movie does not use them well at all. Um, the other thing I will say I did like about this is that there's a wraparound. Uh, Guy Rolf returns as the older Andre Toulon. He's telling the puppets the story of how he learned, you know, everything. And he appears at the beginning and the end of the movie. And it was great seeing him again. He's the last time he actually, his last appearance, the yeah, final appearance of, um, yeah, Guy Rolf as Toulon. And it was nice seeing the original puppets. This is the last movie that we got to see the Dave Allen puppets before they were recreated for the Axis trilogy and they looked like shit. Um,. The score by John Masseri. Yeah, I would say, yeah, the score is pretty good. It's from the same guy who did, um, John Masseri, who did Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The score is good. This is the only Puppet Master movie, except, for, I think, maybe Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys didn't have either, that does not have the Puppet Master music, the theme by Richard Band. I think this is the only one. Um, I really don't want to rewatch Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys to find out. I really don't. <laughs> um,. Yeah, I mean, like, he, like I said, this movie did not need to exist. We did not need this story. It was unnecessary. But they could have made the most out of it and gave us this, uh, like a like hard R retro puppet master movie with these cool puppets like Doctor Death right here, massacring mummies and people and all that. Instead, we got a PG thirteen kids fantasy movie with um, bad acting. Little Dodo puppet action, poor visual effects, which for the Blu-ray, much like Curse, they redid them. They, they still don't look good. The mummies do this hand thing with, like, wavy lines in it. They redid it for the Blu-ray, but it still looks lame to me. Uh, the other visual effects look much better, though. There's a couple things throughout the movie they redid that are pretty cool. Um, the one thing I will say is um, that I found out is the, sh the shots of the train. At the end, Dondre Toulon gets on a train. Uh, with Ilsa and all that and the puppets. And the shots of the train from the outside are actually footage. They sh second unit footage they shot for the Puppet Wars trilogy that sadly we did not get. Instead we got Curse Puppet Master and Retro Puppet Master instead. So, yay. Um, if you read, if you listen to my um, Curse review I go in more detail about it and I have the scripts in the description for it. Um... So I'm not really sure how Puppet Master fans feel about this. I don't talk to many Puppet Master fans. But in this particular, this is a movie that just has... It, I never liked it. I don't have a strong hatred for it. I do think it's a bit of disappointment that they didn't utilize the retro puppets enough. And they could have had some gore to distract us from the elements. Several of the elements that did not work. Um, I do recommend this Blu-ray, though. Uh, the movie looks great. Way better than it should ever. It should look. Ever be. It's the best it's ever going to look. Um, I recommend it for a couple reasons. Once the commentary track has David Dakota and actor Greg Sestero talking about the making of the movie. And it's a hilarious, informative track about the making of the movie. He talks about the script problems trying to make a PG-13 like I talked about. Greg Sestero talks about how Tommy was so thought it was the greatest movie ever made. Which is really funny. But not only that, there are two hours behind the scenes footage that has an optional commentary track with David Dakota, and that's really informative and interesting. I really like that stuff. You know, I might not like the movie, but I like looking at that stuff. It also has the video zone. I forgot to mention it with Curse, but they also have the video zone. Because um, growing up, the video zones were the shit, weren't they? They were really cool. And they stopped doing them, and then they brought them back for um, Axis Rising, and then they disappeared again really too bad. They were really cool. Um, and the video zones for Curse and this were very similar to the ones they did for Paramount Pictures. Uh, but, um, yeah, one thing else I can say about 
Retro Puppet Master. Really don't have much to say about it like I did with Curse, simply because I don't have fond memories of it like I did with Curse. With Curse, you know, I grew to dislike it, but I still have this part of me that loves it. With Retro Puppet Master, I've never loved it. I just don't care about it. But I'll probably, for now on, when I watch the movie, I'll probably only watch it with the commentary track on because I, it's the only good part of the movie is, you know, and it's kind of sad to see what they did with the Retro Puppets. Hopefully one day they bring Dr. Death back and actually give him something to do except for stabbing a mummy with a scalpel. Because that's not exciting to me. Um, but hardcore Puppet Master fans, what do you think about this movie? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Have you never seen it? Do you not remember it? Um, let me know. Um, if you like my channel, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, you know, let me know if you like the videos or not, what you want me to review, possibly. Uh, I'm supposed to do two reviews this week. I probably hold off the um, other one for next week because I have to rewatch the movie. Um, but, you know, if you're a hardcore Hobbit Master fan, pick up this Blu ray. Um, they might be having a Christmas sale, so that's the best thing to probably pick it up. Um, but, um, yeah, um, if you like, like I said, thumbs up, subscribe. I'm Jonathan Knight, and it's been B Movie Madness. Thanks for watching.